Hello again. I have mentioned before that I'm increasingly concerned about what supposedly constitutes terrorism these days in Britain. Perhaps I'm old fashioned, but to me terrorism means planting bombs, shooting people or otherwise causing serious harm to people or property in the cause of some political or religious motivation. That is certainly what terrorism used to be. The other day, a right-wing young man was sent to prison for, among other things, the possession of a copy of the Anarchist's Cookbook. I at one time owned a copy of this myself, as did many other people in the early 1970s. It was first published in the United States and gave instructions for making explosives, constructing silencers for machine guns and all kinds of other things. I never knew anybody put any of this into practice and the Anarchist Cookbook was on sale openly in London bookshops and also advertised in magazines like Time Out. Just having it in your bookshelf now is enough to see you sent to prison for possessing articles in preparation for an act of terrorism. You might have thought that using anti-terrorism legislation to send somebody to prison for owning the wrong book would surely be the maddest thing you could imagine in connection with what is known in this country as the war on terror. But you would have been quite wrong. On Friday, a young man was sentenced to 16 weeks imprisonment after he admitted, and I quote, four charges of wearing an article, namely a t-shirt, in such a way or in such circumstances as to arouse reasonable suspicion that he was a supporter of a proscribed organisation contrary to section 13.1 and 3 of the Terrorism Act 2000. Yes, seriously, t-shirts are now covered by the Terrorism Act. In the description to this video, I give a link to a police report on this case. Let me explain a little, because this is such a scandalous business. Some viewers have noticed that from time to time I wear this sweatshirt, which was a present from my wife. I used to live in Israel and she bought this for me as something of a joke. The words here are from the Bible. Proverbs 11.14 Without guidance, the nation will fall, but in a multitude of counsellors lies safety. This is, of course, the motto of the Mossad, and this is the seal of that organisation, the Intelligence Service of Israel. It's just a light-hearted bit of fun. Now, obviously, some people don't support Israel, and are likely to be irritated at the sight of the um, motto of the Mossad being displayed. That's fine, I don't expect anybody else to support Israel. I'm happy to wear it anyway. The fellow who received a suspended prison sentence on Friday was evidently a supporter of another organisation entirely, namely Hamas. He wore a t-shirt which bore the crest of the Isidin al-Qassam brigades of Hamas, which is uh, the military arm of Hamas. Because the British government has recently designated Hamas a terrorist organisation, this means it is a criminal offence to support them or to indicate that you support them, which <laughs> by actually brings me within reach of the law and love to be sent to prison for 14 years, believe it or not. I'll come to that in a minute. In the meantime, though, consider this. It is quite true that Isidin al-Qassam carries out terrorist acts, but then so too does the Mossad. If by terrorism you count bomb attacks or targeted assassinations, does this mean that wearing this sweatshirt should also be counted as a crime under the anti-terrorism laws? 
Of course not. It would be as mad as arresting somebody for wearing an Isidine al Qassam t shirt. In fact, I'm probably liable to arrest anyway on that count. I lived in various places in Israel over the years. One of them was a small settlement called Talmud Yosef in the northern Sinai. There was a cluster of um, such places just south of a town called Yamet. They don't exist anymore uh, since the peace treaty in 79. It was under Israeli military rule at that time. The thumbnail to this video shows the perimeter fence of Talmud Yosef, which was the bleakest place you ever saw in your life. Anyway, the nearest town was Rafa, and I have good memories of that area. So a while back, I decided to keep up a connection with Rafa by sponsoring an orphan there. Because it's in the Gaza Strip, I did this through a Palestinian organisation associated with the Finchbury Park Mosque in London. And my donations go to Rafa via an intermediary controlled by Hamas. It would be a delicious irony if I were to be ended up uh, being prosecuted for supporting Hamas financially. This present government is getting altogether too keen on arresting people and sending them to prison, not for anything they have done, but rather for what they might do, or what they believe, or what they say. Jeremy Corbyn's brother, Piers, was arrested yesterday, ostensibly for inciting arson, but actually because he disapproves of lockdowns and has taken part in various protests. He talked in a video of those scum who have decided to go ahead with introducing new fascism and then said, you've got to get a list of them and if your MP is one of them, go to their offices and, well, I would recommend burning them down, OK, but I can't say that on air. I hope we're not on air. This was hardly a serious attempt to incite arson. It was all said in a tongue-in-cheek fashion but it was enough for the police to go and arrest a 74-year-old man. Disgraceful. It really is time to start calling a halt to this government's mad desire to control what everybody thinks and says. I, for one, have had more than enough of it. 